All right, so, woo, okay, woo, and we are here. <laughs> so <laughs> welcome everyone to our Storyteller Steam for the Complex. And we are super, super excited to have the amazing Paul Rashid, our director. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> the wonderful Lynn Renee Maxi, our writer. Hi everybody. <laughs> and coming from set, John Giwa-Amu, our other producer. <laughs> and I'm Jade Alexander. I'm one of the producers as well. So yeah, we're all here. We're excited to answer your questions. And I think, John, you have to go because you're on set, right? So did you want to start with the first questions? Sure. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Live. One second. Yeah. First, where in the world are all of you? I don't even know what country is we're all in. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm, I'm in London, North London. I'm in South London. Yeah. <laughs> John, where are you right uh, now? I, I'm in I'm in Bridgend, just outside Cardiff, where I bizarrely shot three films. Uh, <laughs> we're, um, we're in studio here at the yeah. moment. Uh, on You're a Disney in film. short sleeves. Oh my god! Are you not freezing? It's cold. <laughs> I, it's, the room is boiling. I'm in. It's really <laughs> hot for some reason. I don't know why. I was yeah. waiting to hear that you were from like somewhere in the Maldives or something, shooting something. So I was like, oh, uh, no, the not, shirt not this year. The shirt, the shirt says Maldives. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, so, I'm in LA, LA yeah. and it's freezing here. Really? It has been so cold the last what, couple. What's of LA years. freezing? What's LA freezing? Is LA freezing like? <laughs> like, no, it's like been 17, properly 17, yeah, 18 yeah. degrees Celsius. Yeah. Like, yeah, like you can see your breath. There's yeah. like frost on the ground. Oh, really? Wow. I am not cut out for this, people. Yeah. I am not cut out for this. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, awesome. uh, so so I've, I've got some questions here. The Jade and John questions. Uh, yeah, John, you just do the ones under your name. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. Who shall I ask specifically? Uh, well, ask everyone and we can all answer, okay. including yourself. So these all are right. questions coming in from um, the Discord, from the Twitter, from the uh, Instagram. So yeah, they're just questions that have come in over the course of the last week. And so we thought we'd just raise our fans with an answer. Okay, well, this is a question all of you get quite a lot, I would imagine. And it always puts me on the spot a little bit. Yeah. What is your favorite film or game yeah see oh, i think the person who asked the question needs to answer first though john so yeah. <laughs> no, no, mine, mine's a simple one i love film it is, film is blade runner i would say it's always blade runner although my top 10 shifts around a little bit i was um, i was expecting die hard john I was, I'm... <laughs> it's in there it's that's in the top 10 you know yeah. and there's, there's, there's several more as well um but uh, in terms of game, that is a really interesting one. I think Detroit Become Human I'm going to go with today. Ooh. Um, yeah, feels a bit of a cliche when I put Blade Runner up there, but mm -hmm. that's how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Paul? Uh, yeah, tricky tricky question. I guess uh, with favorite film, Die Hard is, 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 is always up there. But I'm going to go with The Mummy, actually, because like I feel like The Mummy <laughs> film... It's like, I, for some reason, I always reference it. And again, it was probably a reference that we talked about in the complex a little bit. But yeah. I feel like I always say The Mummy because I remember when I was a kid and it was always, it, in the UK, it's always on TV. Like The Mummy and The Mummy Returns are always on TV for some reason, just like psychically they're on ITV. And I feel like The Mummy was like watching growing up as a kid was the first kind of film that made me feel, because it was just such a mishmash of genres as well. It made me feel scared. It made me feel excited. It made me laugh like it it had a kind of everything that you want. And like, it was the first kind of film that really like gripped me as a kid that I can remember. So I, I'll always go for the mummy and game. Um, I don't know. I think anything, any of the Assassin's Creed games, which were like the early ones with Ezio, the character, which is sort of set in, there's, there's Rome. There's one set in Florence, Odyssey. there's one set in Rome. And there's yeah, one. that one. I can't no, so Odyssey that one. is one of the most recent ones. I really like Odyssey, but the original. So there was oh. the first Assassin's Creed and then, Assassin's Creed 2 is in Florence and then and then there were two other like su like spin-off games that were following this character Ezio who is from Florence so uh so like any one of those three really I would say would be my favorite so um yeah those are those, those are my two answers I'd just like to say as well Paul was part of a one-man crusade 
about the mummy to bring back Brendan Fraser before he came back. Ooh, <laughs> no, I was. I, was. <laughs> I am correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Lynn? Amazing. Um, I would say my favorite movie is Arrival. Um, there is just something about it that it's this deeply human story with this really beautiful, really cool sci-fi overlay to it. Um, and it's one of the movies that you have to watch several times to pick up on all the little details and nuances. And I love movies that kind of reward multiple viewings, um, which is always really, really fun. I've seen that one so you made me want to see it again. Oh, yeah. so good. So good. Um, and then my favorite game right now, this might be a little bit of a cheat, but I would say The Last of Us because I've been rewatching the HBO series as well um, and just seeing how they've shifted pieces of the game and the story and the world to fit on television is just fascinating to me. So um, that's where my brain is right now. My brain is just right. Joel and Ellie at all times right now. I know, Jade, what about you? All right. Well, this was controversial. Paul and I had a very drunken chat <laughs> about our favorite films where I got accused of being too, I don't know, what did you say? I, you, you I, I, I mean, I can't, I, clearly I can't. I was too <laughs> obvious. We were very drunk. Not just this morning, right? Like, yeah. 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 Well, you guys hopped on. <laughs> it got it got it was in Cannes, it was in a hotel, uh, an apartment, and it got so rowdy that the neighbors complained. Um, there was a lot. I remember you said The Mummy and I said 2001 A Space Odyssey and you're like, it's so obvious. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm I mean, not everyone, to... everyone in the film industry says that, but I mean, it's, it's for a reason. It's for a reason. It's so. for a reason. Well, if I'm not allowed to say that, I'd say Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Mm. Controversy. All of us have gone for sat fantasy sci-fi. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I'm really proud of us, you guys. Yeah. We're consistent on message for the complex. You know exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and these are our on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And then the game, oh, favorite game, that changes. Right now, I'm loving Potion Craft, which is a potion simulator on PS4. Yeah. It's, okay. <laughs> it's so simple, but like my brain's like, oh, this is so calming. And it's got mm. little calming music. And I'm just mixing potions and selling them to people. <laughs> It's really, really small, but it's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah there you go. Um, Very good. Yeah. So, wh whoever Barry is asks, thank you, Barry. Uh, is there a genre you would love to explore as an interactive story? Mm. Paul Rashid. Well, I, yeah. John, you need to answer. You need to answer first before I, I, I use your time of answering. To <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Um, all right. I, yeah, I could answer it though. But if you, if you, if you, if uh, I still, I still think there's some fun to be had potentially with a romantic comedy. Although we kind of have done one of those mm. now a little bit, but not, not fully. Um, and I'm still kind of intrigued by like a properly shit yourself scary horror, mm. like yeah. you know, to to do. I don't think we've kind of done that mm. properly yet. We've done, we done a thing called Night Book, but I'd love to do like a proper bigger budget, you know, scare, actually mm. get frightened, like the ring type mm. fright. Um, mm. Oh God, that was so scary. I had nightmares for months. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, I think that's probably it. Yeah, that's what that's what I'd explore. I think probably with the horror. I, think yeah. horror. I, would say, I would say horror as well. I mean, that's the, because I feel like the complex was, we did sci-fi thriller, and then since then I've done two rom-coms, uh, fantasy. We um, did with Death Trap Dungeon, The Golden Room. Uh, mm -hmm. Done a hostage thriller. Uh, done various different types of thrillers and rom-coms. So, like, I think horror is the one that's kind of that missing from, especially that I haven't explored yet fully. Uh, I know we had a really great jump scare in the complex that everybody still kind of cites and references. So having seen the, you know, the the response to that, I'd love to make something that was like full of jump scares and like, you know, really a cool supernatural, supernatural ball to the wall horror would be would be my 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 pick as well. And film noir. <laughs> film noir, exactly. Because we're working on a film noir <laughs> project. And I think it actually lends itself really well because mm. you can unpack the crime scene and unpack you know, interviews with the with, with the witnesses and stuff. So I think actually it's 
it's quite a cool little very random thing that I think will work really well with interactive movies mm. yeah so, yeah totally agree absolutely yeah and what about you Lynn I would probably I really love the idea of doing horror I'm um, especially there's something fun about like freaking people out and the jump scares of it all to the point that they're like oh my god I have to make the choice like almost getting people to um I don't know drop their controllers drop their drop their phone and be like oh wait no I'm I'm in control of this uh I think that would be really fun I would love to see something also set in space I think a space yeah. horror you know what does what does alien look like as a branching narrative project there I, there could be some really fun stuff That's there cool mm. yeah that is really cool yeah okay. a space horror um well um, film noir <laughs> like I said before like I thought we we Paul and I have a film noir project and I I really the more I get into the sort of game mechanics of it the more I'm like wow there's a lot you can do with film noir because of all the games within the games within the games and the killer can play games and you know it it just has a lot of gaming around it but um I also am working on a horror but it's more of a gory horror so not not as like sort of jump scary but more gory so that's quite fun and that's sort of I don't know that yeah it'll be really interesting because it's not my normal I don't go out and watch gory horrors so I'm a little bit like oh, okay <laughs> something new and different that's really something cool. new and different uh, like, but I'm Hostel, Hostel would have been a good interactive actually now that, now that you're talking about that kind of yeah or so yeah like, so, so, so would be yes. quite interactive as well yeah but, you know we yeah. should like just to kind of pitch this while we're all here which is a rare occurrence but like <laughs> We haven't done anything with the sequel for the complex, and I wonder what would happen in the complex if it had gone tits up outside. Yeah, yeah. And what that could mean. Mm, mm. Who could be the protagonist? And yeah. you know what? Yeah. Because you could make that into horror. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like a post-apocalyptic horror. Um, what's that? Like a post-apocalyptic horror. Mm. Yeah, some mm. kind of survival horror type. Mm. Yeah, that could be quite fun. Yeah. Well, there is that ending where we where Reese got left in the uh, in it. We could Reese could get out. What happens if Reese gets? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Reese. Bring, bring back Reese. <laughs> bring him out. Yeah. Yeah. Out yeah. Of the basement. yeah. Reese escapes the basement. Reece, <laughs> the complex Reece. two. Reese escapes the basement. Oh, if you guys I'll like this back hashtag, back. bring back Reese. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Amazing. I know. Let's take a pin in it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let's continue this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's also our friend, um, the asset. What's his name, Paul? Um, you know, the uh, doctor <laughs> with the ponytail. Yeah, yeah, but he's dead. He's dead in every branch, though. Oh wait, no, he yeah. fell down a hole. So he I mean, fell down a hole. Didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, 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 but we never, you know, he could have. That hole could have been the safest place to be in the park. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is that how he big. survives. He's the only guy who survived because he, he got thrown down a hole. He got thrown down a hole. <laughs> <laughs> the sequel it. just starts with him like a mile yeah. outside Climbing of the, out the building. Hole. Yeah. Just like <laughs> making his way out, Shawshank Redemption You know why he's getting a Boba Fett? You know, yeah, like, yeah. like, like yeah. Yeah. Down the yeah, he's sticking yeah, out the yeah. hole. Yeah. In the series. Or is he in the hole and he finds Reese? Because Reese yeah. is digging through, and they, oh, yeah, they, they both they went, they both went the direction in the end, didn't they? So I guess that <laughs> both holding a spoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. right. Guys, well, you heard it here this first. Is kids. I have to. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, guys. <laughs> um, Love it. All right. So, um, what was my favorite memory working on the complex? Mm. Well, aside from the caravan park that we hired, uh, and. The fond memories of having to put our weaver on a watch list with our <laughs> runners because he'd sneak off and have a cigarette all the time <laughs> and even pull the breath without an actor. <laughs> that was great. Um, oh, that was what, was my, what was my favourite? Back it was sunny. It was really nice weather. It was like a clement shoot that was. Mm. You know, it was it was it was a nice time to shoot, and it was a good it was a good place we were shooting in. Yeah, great. It was a great location. Yeah, um, gorgeous. Yeah, well, that, that, it was it was a nice ship. Um, yeah, I had plenty of fun memories from that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, likewise. I have. I think it's because it's it was also 
the year before COVID. So it was kind of like that final like 12 months in the before times. And it's like, yeah, like John said, it's just like, when I look back on it, you know, the sun was out, we were just like, it was just, it was, yeah, well, you kind of romanticize it when you look at it through that prism kind of thing, like actually the experience of it just before all of that stuff happened, um, just with the crew that we had, I'd say, yeah, it was more of a, a general good memory of it. But I would say if I was to get specific, maybe my favorite scene to shoot would be the um, uh, Michelle, Amy in the vent, because uh, again, Die Hard was like, yeah, it would make me feel the like- was great. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, just to say as well, like not to leave them out, but the cast was generally, you know, Michelle at the head of it was mm. fantastic. It was amazing, like a bunch yeah, of people. yeah. They were amazing. They were so nice. Yeah, that that made it nice. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, amazing people all around. So uh, yeah, those would be those would be my my memories. There was a day. One of the days I was on set uh, was the day that we blew up the toilet. Mm, actually, yeah, that's. <laughs> and it had just been a really busy day. Like Jade and I were talking. At one point, somebody handed me an iPad so mm -hmm. I could go through and pick background actors for scenes that were getting shot like the following week and so I'm standing there on set thing in my ear like flipping through and then all of a sudden somebody's coming up and like putting like noise canceling headphones over my ears and somebody's handing me a mask that was the first time I wore a mask like that yeah. and I'm just like do to do and then I'm like hold on wait a minute I should probably not be standing right here when we blow this up, right? And they were like, yeah, please move. Please move. <laughs> one of those, like, you're doing a thousand things and the energy of the set and the people and we're doing this thing that we set for, like, forth to do. It was just, every time I look back, I think about that and uh, just, I love it. I, I laugh, it was crazy. And then there was just tiny little powdery, I don't even know, concrete maybe, something from the explosion that was just everywhere for hours afterwards that took forever to clean up, but it looked fabulous. It does look, it does look brilliant. Continuously <laughs> going there. But yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Explosion oh, day yeah. was so fun. Mm. That was really fun. Actually, what one of my favorite memories was, that was linked to one of my funniest memories, which is, the explosion happened. I think we did it like once or twice, wasn't it? And once. I just remember, it was a one. I think I it, was like a one. Did, it was a one. It was a one and done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they prepped us, and I had my camera. I, I had my phone up, and I'm recording, and I'm like, okay, I'm ready for when they say, you know, when they say action, I'm ready, I'm ready. And then I got distracted by something, mm. <laughs> and, and then they, I think you yelled action, and I didn't press it, and then I pressed it like five seconds after and the explosion happened and I quickly unpressed it as the explosion's happening because I was just so scared so I literally do not have a video of the explosion on my phone <laughs> I just got so scared by the whole thing I was like oh my yeah. god so yeah that was my silliest memory but um yeah uh I got to smash a jar at your head do you remember that was pretty fun Paul yes yeah yeah sugar glass we were getting, we had lots of sugar glass that we Paul was like can you please smash this against my head and film yeah. it I'm like <laughs> What? Yeah, no, it was, yes. that was super fun. Oh, that what happened on set when I wasn't there? <laughs> yeah. And then the ice cream truck, which you were there for. So that that was cool. I was very excited by the ice cream. Always great. Yeah. Um okay. So this is this is an interesting question. Um I think I know the answer actually for me personally. <laughs> um what's the hardest part about making a film? Pretty big question. Um, for, for no, that's different depending what you do, of course, mm. on a film. Uh, yeah. For me, Agreed. as one of the producers, the hardest part is the bit before you know it's going to happen, which is normally the longest bit. Mm. Um, and uh, for us on this, actually, it was quite a short period. Really, it was only a couple of years, which to normal people is horrifying, but to us as filmmakers, is completely normal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the way life is. And you kept uh, telling me not to open champagne. You were like, no, no, no. no <laughs> we're not closed yet. We're not closed You're yet. You're like, yeah. we're not closed. The is there. Well, it kind of is. Well, <laughs> not like, until it's actually signed. And it's not in the and bank then, yet. And they could and always And then you're like, out. no, no. Yeah, yeah. Every time I'm like, well, what about now? And you were like, well, we're not on set yet. So it might all fall apart. I'm like, ah, oh, when? 
and I figured out the answer of when to open the champagne, John. It's it's always because yeah. it might yeah. be hard yeah. at any point. Very so at least you open champagne at Amen. that point, and then yeah. at that point, and then at that point. Yeah, that's really interesting. I took a picture of my bacon roll on this film I'm shooting now because you never really know. And, it, and it's horrible because you never get to congratulate yourself properly. And by the time you do have your bacon roll, you're in so much in the thick of it yeah. that it doesn't feel like it's the right time for celebration. It's yeah. like a job to do. I love it. Uh, Is that so, your bacon roll was your celebration for this film? It, it's just when I know it's really happening because mm. we've paid a company to make me that bacon roll. So then <laughs> <laughs> love that milestone that's awesome <laughs> um but uh but yeah the, the 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 lead up is the hardest bit everything that you have to do to make that bacon roll happen mm. Mm. yeah i would say for me as a writer the hardest part is very similar to that kind of my work is mostly done like the big the script is done and i'm handing it off and now we all wait together and I always want to do more and jump in and how can I help and how can I be there and like that's not my job <laughs> like you know and that's why you have incredible cast and crew like all of you to jump in and be like you know now you guys are going to go off and be amazing and then yeah that the waiting the waiting to find out if all of this hard work is going to actually be seen by anyone anywhere is uh is definitely the hardest I, I would say as a director funnily enough it's actually i think the production the shooting itself because i feel like that's the point where you feel in the there's 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 so many other factors at play that are out of your control that it feels like you are whereas in pre-production you know it's all theoretical and like the sky's the limit and it's sort of like you know if you're talking in you're talking theoretically and you can make all these plans and have all these things which you know you're about to make a masterpiece and then in post it's you know you've, you've got it and you've got what you've got but you still have the element of control in the sense of you can shift things around and you can you know you, you have control over the the, the the storytelling in a way but when you're on set there's like anything could go wrong or you know stuff that that's that you can't do anything about you know someone could be ill or there could be a delay or something you have something go wrong camera could break yeah a camera could break or you know there's all these things that can happen during a shoot where you just there's nothing you can do about it um as opposed to prep and um post where it feels like there's there are you know there's you, you feel a bit more in control as a director in some ways um mm. so i would say the actual shoot itself for yeah many yeah because anything can happen and it can you know really really stop your plans and there's nothing you can do about it so yeah I would say that yeah well I think I just personally I just echo John and say like I think the hardest part well I don't know sometimes the hardest part for, for a producer can be the whole process mm. <laughs> because you know just having the project and then trying to pitch it and then trying to get finance like that's incredibly tough then trying to like make sure that your finances stick around to actually help you get the money and 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 make the thing is really tough and then on the complex we we faced a few one big challenge where we had to completely change everything we were doing and we had to scrap a whole pretty much half the day and we had so little time and you know you're constantly juggling how many days you've got to shoot and how many things you have to still shoot but you don't really have the time so how are you going to do that so yeah and then in post um we had some visual effects issues like a lot more visual effects than we expected mm. and um they as tends to happen yeah <laughs> yeah as tends to happen and yeah. and our team were just completely overloaded so we ended up having to bring more people on so yeah, it was. I think there were challenges throughout the whole thing, and then of course when we released, John, do you remember you and I were talking about doing a press release? I always remember this because I was like, oh god, this thing's finally, it's going out to the world, and we were going to do a press release, and I, um, I just got really busy right before our release date in uh, on the thirty first of March. Was it? Was it the thirty first of March? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was right at the beginning of COVID. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, that was the first day that uh, lockdown had happened. So it was the first day of lockdown in the UK when we released. And we were going to do a really big press conference. And I remember John calling me going, we should organize this two weeks before. And I was like, oh, I'm just really tired. I don't think I've got the energy. <laughs> as a producer, that's a problem as well. And I was like, I just don't think so. I don't think I can do it. 
And then, um, yeah, like a week later, they were like, right, we're calling the first lockdown. It's it. It's everything's cancelled. And I was like, oh, thank God, I didn't organize it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the Twitch was amazing, wow. the Twitch premiere. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, that yeah, was, was so cool. Fun. That was really fun. So well, the um, trick is of not making the film too hard is working with decent people, which, that's... you know, we all got through this alive. And yeah, we're and we're still we're still on, on talking fun, terms. So. We're still yeah. we're all talking to each other. So uh... absolutely, <laughs> we still like each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's absolutely, it. That's it. good people so, is the key. So yeah, so oh, I'm um, really sorry. I've got to go back downstairs. We're we're in studio now, and uh, uh, not to name drop, but Mr. Willem Dafoe is on set. Yeah. So, Woo. Um, Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, and with that, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, go but, enjoy. Uh, Let's let's sort out complex too. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. Like a plan. Let's do it. <laughs> do it. I'm Maybe in. some space. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Take care. Good job. Bye. 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 Cool. So, Lynn, do you want to ask your questions? We've got yeah. a couple of short, quick ones, and then we've got two from um from our uh, Discord team. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Okay. So let's see. My first question. Oh, we covered this one. Where are you right now? Know where you all are. We did this one. Hey, look and at the that. Place, place in the room, though, was not a uh, place in room. Uh, room wasn't covered. I am sitting in my office at my house. <laughs> there my living are. room, which is my yeah. office. <laughs> yeah, living room, which is my office as well. But my, yeah, I like to think my office is the co this corner of the living room. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, okay, uh, this one, oh, easy. Puppies or kittens? I absolutely must say puppies. Let's see, because I have my oh. puppy just chilling on my couch behind me. So oh. obviously, obviously puppies. Uh, Jade, what about you? Kittens, always. I mean, puppies are cute. I will. I know, they're all great. <laughs> <laughs> but but for me, kittens. Yeah, yeah. can't go past one. <laughs> definitely, definitely puppies. Definitely. I'm a, I'm a dog person. I mean, I'm not allowed to say it too loudly because my girlfriend's a big cat person but uh so she would she would kill me for not saying kittens but puppies for sure 100 percent. Always. <laughs> always been a dog person so yeah don't tell any don't tell her yeah that. yeah yeah <laughs> thank god this isn't going out to anyone yeah anywhere. exactly know, right <laughs> <laughs> um okay so one the next question um from barry is what got you into interactive film storytelling um let's see I forgot I have to answer my question first um this film got me into interactive storytelling uh because originally when I wrote the first script it was just a straightforward linear you know 80 page script uh, that Jade and I started working on and then um when Wales Interactive came in and everyone started joining the question kind of popped up hey what would you think of making this an interactive story. And I had no idea how to do that. Uh, Jade and I definitely had a lot of conversations <laughs> of figuring out what this could look like. But literally, I remember that moment of what if this was interactive? And I just saw it all like in front of me. And it was just so clear and such a challenge. And I was so excited. And now, like, I would, I would love to do it again, because it it takes, I'm used to going through all of these iterations as a writer of what could happen and okay, they could have this conversation or that conversation, they could go here, they could go there, what would happen? And instead of just having to choose one path and write one path, um, I get to write all of them and yeah. then kind of hand that control over to our incredible audience and allow them to explore the world kind of a step earlier than they uh, maybe normally would be able to. So that's how I got into it. And I'm very happy that I'm here. Yeah. I mean, I, I might jump in on that one because Lynn and I were working on this together. And that's how we started, got started when Lynn and I met at a party in London. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she yeah, was sat down next to each other at a Ooh, friend's birthday party. That's we're like, right. oh, we got to hold on. You do what now? Okay. Yeah. Well, we both talked about how much we love sci-fi and I was like, great, that sounds really cool. And Lynn was working on a little TV show that hadn't come out in the UK, you know, just a little one it's called <laughs> The Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> and 
I was like, cool, yeah, whatever. You're working on a little TV show. And of course, like months later, I was like, whoa, the huge <laughs> posters are everywhere. <laughs> so, that was a, a bit of a surprise when that happened. But um, yeah. It's a bit that- of a surprise to us too, just for the record. <laughs> oh, it was a very nice surprise. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah, and then I I had met John at a John's not here, but I'll I'll, me- I'll mention how that happened. I met John um, at another sort of film opening thing for one of his films, and I said, you know, I really like the films that you make, and I think we should work together sometime. He was like, yeah, cool, whatever. So I sent him this script, and um, and to be fair, it was John that said, hey. Um, yeah, would you be interested in turning it into a video game? And I'm like, uh, I don't know about a video game. He's like, no, 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 but like an interactive story where it's live action, but it's still going to be game so that the audience can play through it. And I was like, whoa, tell me more. And that's how John and I kind of started working together with Lynn. And then we thought, wow, we're going to need a really awesome director who can kind of understand <laughs> film and games take it away Paul <laughs> well yeah I mean that's the, the again the same answer as Lynn this is the this is this project the complex that's the reason I'm I'm in interactive films to this day and if, if interactive film slash FMV game to this day so um yeah I was just it was it was again it was sort of John connecting the dots really because he's, he's a producer much like UJ who I was you know I I'd, I'd gone and seen his film at the Rain Dance Film Festival a couple of years prior so he was a producer that I, I'd always been looking at so I was I, he was, I was talking to him potentially about doing something. And he just said, and he said, and Bandsnatch had just come out at the time. So um, he, and then he told me about this and he said, look, is interactive something you'd be interested in? And I was like, yeah, why not? I mean, I like games. I like, I like films. I, <laughs> I've never, you know, I never made a game before or anything like that, but it feels like I've always been interested in non-linear storytelling. So it was something, so then he introduced me to Jade and, and, and the three of us got a talking and, yeah, no, and then it just kind of, it happened really quickly, right? Like with, it was, it's sort of, yeah, it kind of snowballed, which again is really unusual for a director to kind of, you know, come aboard a project and then it's like, it's shooting like three or four months later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was all like an amazing whirlwind thanks to, yeah, John and Jade. Um, and that's why I am here, here now, thanks to, thanks to you, you guys. So um, yeah, no, thank you, The Complex, and thank you. Thank you, you guys, for uh, making, letting me, letting me be here. Oh, yeah. yeah we no. were very thrilled when, uh, <laughs> when you joined. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I'm glad. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, and very grateful also to Lynn for, for going with this crazy idea of making, mm. because when we started working on interactive film, nobody knew what it was. Um, there was like, also no precedent for, like, Lynn writing-wise as well. Yeah. Like, there, no, these kinds of scripts weren't just like out there in the in the public domain like readily available um so it's kind of like you were writing the language you were writing the language like at the you know the the you know at the inception of it almost yeah. you know? obviously there have been you know there have been interactive projects but I don't, I don't know if those their scripts are readily available or you know so you would have been writing your own language um for it which was and yeah. making your own rules which oh, was it was amazing. amazing lynn wrote so this the actual script of the complex is about i think it's 187 pages long and it reads like one of those fighting fantasy books or choose your own adventure books so you know you finish a scene and then it's like go to page seven so it's quite funny when we sent it out to um you know investors and so forth and they were like we want to read the script I'm pretty sure none of them read it because mm. <laughs> like, there's no way they could have read it for, like every single page. Otherwise they would have had to read, you know, this iteration, then go back and, and play it again yeah. and again and again. And like, I don't think that they did. That's, so. It's actually a really good hack to getting finance on film projects. They basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm sure this must be good if they've read you know? it. Yeah, it's, it's quite funny because, you know, with your financiers, you do show them a cut of the film. Um, you show them the script. And I, I remember saying, okay, so do we have any comments on the script? And apart from the games company, Wales Interactive, nobody else commented. And I'm like, okay, uh, are you guys sure there's no other comments on the script? And then I got a comment on like page four. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> All right then. <laughs> Same so thing happened when we sent them all the um all the mob files to review when we finished the film, but not the game. And we'd finished all the film, and the every single scene is like a different a different mob file. And I said, "Well, here are all the scenes. <laughs> They're all different mobs, so you can just like play through them." 
or just watch them and they were like ah, oh, yeah yeah I mean they look fine <laughs> <laughs> there were like 500 mobs and I'm like ah, oh, no wonder no one's looking at this so I, we're really grateful, I think, to the to the playtesters at Wales Interactive for for making sure that you know everything worked and and it looked good and yeah. But also, you know, to everybody who kind of came out of the woodwork on Twitch to join our live premiere, like that premiere was freaking amazing. That was the best thing. I should have said that. That was the best thing for me, mm-hmm. watching you guys and your reactions to what we'd created and spent hours and months and years working on and just seeing your reactions to like whether you liked Reese or whether you hated Reese or what lines mm-hmm. you liked and what you thought was funny and I was like oh that was really beautiful so thank you to the audience yes huge yeah. thank you <laughs> um okay so the next question is from Richie Monster uh is everything filmed exactly to the script or was there any room for any improvisation from the actors? Um, I'm mostly going to defer to uh, Paul on this one, but I would say with this, everything had to be so specific Mm -hmm. because there were so many different versions of it Mm -hmm. that uh, you couldn't kind of run off script because then everything we'd written after it wouldn't quite line up Mm. Um, however we had incredible um, actors who just brought so much and so many different emotional colors and performances to each of the different versions of everything we were doing that uh, I just like I don't even know how they did it but also Paul I will I love it. I was like, I'm going to defer to Paul and then yeah. totally answer. No, well, I agree. You were basically stole my answer. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah that, um, I mean, what was it like for you on set with everyone? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It, it, I think it, in some ways, again, it's quite liberating as, you know, I, I, I having written some myself since then and then, you know, stuff that you write and then direct and then take to post. It's actually quite liberating in many ways that because the structure of an interactive is so specific and so paramount to making the whole thing work because it's this you know intricate matrix where everything is stitched together and kind of holding it up it's like a house of cards it's like if you if you change one thing there's untold you know repercussions that could happen um so you kind of like you can't change the structure much once it's written it's like that's kind of the the superstructure's got to be that obviously there's room for improvisation with small details within dialogue and that kind of thing and blocking and you know those kinds of things but as far as like you know broader improv like changing a character's backstory or saying they did something with it like you just there's there's always risks of involved in that so we kind of are like like you know we're kind of stuck in that structure in many ways which is great because you know you know as Lynn will attest as a as a writer, like you can, you can do anything with the story. Like you can, you know, you could write something and then be like, actually, I'm gonna tell it all backwards now, or that scene can go there and then let's put a flashback here and let's do that. Then it was like interactive, it's like, no, you can't, which is great. It's like, it gives you, it like you're forced into a structure, which means, and that carries through to post, you're, you're in the edit and you can't be like, oh, I'm just gonna change the order of this whole thing. Yeah. Or tell this in flashback instead of this or whatever. It's like, it's, it gives you it gives you a lot of structure in your storytelling. I mean, it means you've got to be really, really sure and happy with the script um, because yeah. obviously uh, before you start shooting. But I think that is for me. I I really like that. I like that it gives you you know structure and it makes sure that you're all working towards something and you can't just suddenly flip the script, so to speak, in on the day or in post or whatever. It's it's um yeah so. There is room for improvisation, but it's very limited um, in its scope, so so we say. So um, yeah, that would be my answer to that question. Ooh. And what I would hope is that with actors, you know, you I know that they a lot of times want to bring that improvisation mm. and that like, can I try it a little bit differently? And mm. what if what if I framed it like this? Like, but I think with the structure, like you were talking about, because there's so many different versions of the same scene where sometimes we're saying like, okay, this is the scene where you guys are feeling really close. Mm. You're having this conversation, but like you're close to each other. It's going well. Okay. Now we're going to shoot a different version of the exact same scene, except she made you upset Mm -hmm. in the scene prior. So now you're, you're angry at each other in this version. Mm. 
So I'm hoping that you get a little bit of that um, chance to try it a lot of different ways and dig in in a lot of different versions of it, um, hopefully in a way that still serves the the structure and context and, and story. And our cast was amazing at that that kind yeah. of they were able to just try things and they they were improving set like some some great like Al Weaver as Reese was Michelle was uh Kim Addis was Kate Dickey was like all of the you know all of our cast were like really you know they were really relishing it and they were really enjoying the fluidity of the of the of the of the format which I think is 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 was amazing and it's uh yeah I think a lot of actors they were initially daunted, but then they realized that there's a, actually a lot more freedom potentially in interactive storytelling. And 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 this cast were the, you know, really took advantage of that in a in a really fantastic way that just added so much texture to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're all incredible. Mm. Um so Paul, do you want to jump to uh your yes. question from I think it's Sad Muppet? Okay. Or, or, yeah. Or any of the ones that yeah, I was just looking at time. Um <laughs> uh, uh... <laughs> Well, what, what's the funniest thing that happened during making it? Um, off the top of my head, uh, I can't remember anything that made me laugh. I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, I had a lot of fun making it. I had a lot of fun making it, but it's like you're 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 viewing everything through a like. And I a, smashed the glass on your head. Yes, I will say that. I say that the explosion <laughs> was also very fun. The explosion was very fun. Um, so yeah. Um, so the se a secret skill we could do like a speed round. Um, I yeah. don't think I have any. I was a very fast runner when I was at, at school, so a sprinter, um, so 100 meter sprinter. So I would say maybe that's my secret skill. But don't, you play, uh, don't I, you play football? Oh yeah, but not not. I wouldn't say it's I'm skilled at it. Like I'm 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 like amateur. <laughs> I'm not like yeah yeah. <laughs> You're better than me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jadlin, secret skill. Uh yeah, my secret skill, let's see, I can, I can play piano. I'm a classically trained pianist. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Skill. Love that. I don't do it too much yeah. anymore, but yeah. Very nice. Well, my secret skill is I'm a second Dan black belt in Taekwondo. Again, a proper skill. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Use that to intimidate people on set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why everyone, the set ran like clockwork. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nobody absolutely. will mess with her. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, and then quickly on to what games did you play or films were you thinking of when creating the complex? Ooh, so nice. Uh, games, again, I'll always cite this as like a massive influence on my, when I was like learning about the, um, you know, the interactive form and, and branching narrative was Until Dawn. Um, that taught me so much. Late Shift as well, obviously, Wales Interactive, you know, the kind of seminal interactive film uh that you know taught me so much and it was just such an enjoyable game to play so i would say those two late shift and until dawn um and uh films i mean it was just kind of uh i think tonally again looping back i i, I took tried to take as much, many cues as i could from the mummy uh tonally so kind of <laughs> again as something that you know was you know fate of the world life or death kind of like an advent adventure films like the mummy indiana jones like i wanted to make the comp have have an element of a lightness of touch here and there within the complex um mm. to suit the format of it obviously you know we like there was there's a lot of serious stuff a lot of serious topics that get touched on but i wanted the pace and the tone of it to still have an adventure film kind of feel to it um so it was you know fed into that gaminess so it was especially fun because we could I, there was a direction i could have gone with it which was more like what white chamber my previous film was which was you know it was quite serious quite a serious grave um austere tone um but i kind of wanted it to have a lightness of touch so yeah that would those would be my um my two answers for that for that question do you guys have any 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 answers you want to jump in with those yeah i'll echo late shift mm. for me um it was just a really helpful opportunity for me to see how the structure worked and how the storytelling could work um as i was creating this and then let's see i just love any I love female driven sci-fi. So there was a lot of watching Alien, a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, Ellen Ripley in there. Like she's yeah. smart. She's very capable. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to bring a lot of that to Amy's character. Uh, and then, I mean, all of the kind of British spy thriller movies and TV shows um, like MI5. And I mean, I was 
I watch so many of them. <laughs> Those are probably my my top choices. Yeah, I think I'm I'm echoing obviously late shift, um, definitely for research. Um, and it was great, just especially once you get into it. So if you haven't played late shift, definitely go get a copy. Um, I also played The Bunker, which was a Wales Interactive early film, which was really it's it's quite fun. Like it's quite it's slightly different format. It's not quite the same, but it was quite fun. Um, what else? Uh yeah, I think I rewatched like a whole heap of sci-fi films when we mm. were developing this. And I'm trying to remember. I definitely watched Arrival when we were developing this. I definitely yeah. watched um, Contagion. Stephen Soderbergh. Yes. Great, yeah, great, I, great choice. Which everybody one. started watching again in COVID. And the pandemic. COVID, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and you guys heard it here first. We started making this pre-pandemic. We shot it in 2019. Come on, people. Yeah. <laughs> Um, absolutely thank you for making that point (laughs) (laughs) yeah um yeah this this had been a labor of quite a few years before before we released and then um you know obviously we released at the same time as COVID which was Mm. not really what we expected to do but hey it kind of uh, worked so I had done a little too much research into pandemics and like what governments would do if there was a pandemic and what could happen to society that, you know, as everything was starting to happen with COVID, I was like, yeah, yeah. people, <laughs> people, this is, this is a big deal. <laughs> did you know, did you know about the toilet paper issue? Uh, no, I missed that I didn't one. Think we so... missed that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next, and now the I know. Two, there is no toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> the true issues of our time, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then hopping on to that uh, question, if you were making another FMV game and any technical issues, money, IP, rights and so forth, weren't an issue, uh, what would your dream FMV, FMV project be? Um, well, now if you've given me carte blanche like that, then I guess something that spans that spans countries and cultures and Ooh. like some, uh, you know, an adventure film with an adventure FMV game, interactive film, what have you with global scope and scale, something like, so I don't know, Unch- the Uncharted games are a really good example of that because it's kind of like Nathan Drake adventuring around the world, looking for treasure. So maybe something like that, where, you know, the choices are like, do you, do you go looking for this thing in, in, sub-saharan africa or in oh you know God. the amazon <laughs> where in the world is Car- carmen san diego yeah. yes, i was just thinking that <laughs> that would be awesome an interactive where is the where in the world is carmen san diego oh my god that'd be amazing i would say that that would be my answer to that so, then so we can hop like on a adventure, plane. maybe like a treasure hunting adventure film kind of thing game yeah, yeah. uncharted type thing yeah i'll, yeah. I'll produce that yeah <laughs> i just need like lots of money there we go yeah. that's the, that I, I i took that and ran with it in the question <laughs> yeah i'm down yeah. with that yeah yeah what about you guys I say if i had unlimited money and no technical issues uh, Mm. because I really want to do an interactive story set in space Mm. um I would shoot it in low earth orbit Mm. um and do like all of it just you know with the literal earth outside like if we're just gonna go for it let's yeah Yeah. (laughs) let's go for it yeah Um, I think that could be really fun maybe a little complicated to do you know an entire crew up there with you but Hey, we're creative and money, apparently money's not money, all the money money's in the no world. Object. Money's no object. So uh... no object. <laughs> that's what I would do. Yeah. Oh, this is hard. I I think, well, I just had a really cool idea. I think I'd I'd want to do two. <laughs> I'd want to do two. And one of them would be a space thing. Like I'd want to do something in space, but with planets that's like, like you land on a planet. You can choose which planet to land on. And maybe there's like alien civilizations and you can like immerse yourself in a world of that planet or if you don't like it you can leave that planet and go to a different planet so kind of massive scale there um and then the other one which would be very completely different would be a bit more on Paul's treasure hunting one but it would be an ancient Egypt one with Mm. a um I guess 19 is sort of a pseudo 19th century British archaeologist type thing but it doesn't have to be British but 
archaeologists going in and like doing archaeology, but maybe in a slightly fantasy world. So we have less of the British imperialism and colonialism. <laughs> um, just kind of gloss over that. <laughs> maybe. But yeah, it would be very cool because I love archaeology and I love like the idea of like finding tombs and getting down there and you could like dig and find tombs and like, you know, maybe some of the mummies would come to life and or the, the curse of Tutankhamun would come and get you if you didn't, yeah. if you weren't careful. So yeah, that would be... That. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a great answer. Oh, and then there's one more thing. Uh, what film or game do you wish you could have made? Um, that's a really tricky question. Um, okay, film. I'll say film and get film. I'm going to try and name a film I haven't mentioned yet. Actually, my guilty pleasure film, which was on literally last weekend that I watched, was The Devil Wears Prada. Because it's like well, it's the film that I like. Whenever it's on, for some reason, I just I just have to watch it. It's oh, wow. just so it's so well told, and I just think it's it's amazing. I like love it. It's like I'll always watch. So maybe for that reason that I made a film that I will always watch. Um, if I made that, then that would be great. Um, yeah, The Devil Wears Prada would be my Devil Wears Prada would be my film I wish I could have made, and Horizon Zero Dawn um would be my game that I wish I could have made I just played the sequel uh at the end of last year which so I just love the world of that film uh that game and it's just like you know I, I sink so many hours into completing it um so yeah I'm a big RPG fan but uh yeah I would say that that's my favorite the game that I wish I could have made because I just love the world they create oh cool nice. go on Liz um let's see the game I wish I would have made Again, I'm trying to come up with ones I haven't, we haven't said for, oh, there's one called It Takes Two. Mm, um, I love that. It's a okay. really yeah, beautiful yeah. Um, storytelling world that I just, it's really emotional, uh, yeah. which I wasn't expecting, um, but I loved it. So that yeah. one. And so then, fun. It's so fun. <laughs> like, yeah, when you right? Play, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, you, when you've when you got, when you whoever you play with, it's like, it's so fun and cooperative. I love, yeah, I love co-op game. Yeah, I think is that's that what I loved about it. Was the is that the jailbreak one? You got to break out of jail? No. Uh, no, it's a, wow, how to even. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave that to you, Lynn. You can, you can explain. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, good luck, good job. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a couple that is potentially getting divorced um, that they're essentially turned into dolls. Mm, yeah, yeah. they like have to run through their house so everything is like enormous and they have to oh, figure wow. out how to get through everything uh with the potential idea that you know maybe they're going to come out of this and still get divorced or maybe they're going to come out of this and you know they'll have learned something and grown back together and they're going to give it another another chance and um yeah it's really it's wild yeah. it's wild but it's really cool sounds cool all right so that's um, interesting yeah and then film I wish I would have made uh Dune uh, the, the recent, recent one. one yeah the recent one <laughs> um, the one with Patrick Stewart <laughs> yeah although that one is brilliant for its own special reasons yes. <laughs> no but uh the original the the first Dune from a couple years ago here uh mm -hmm. was brilliant I saw it in theaters three times including one time when I literally took a notebook and went and took notes all the way through to see how the story was structured and how it was done. And it was just, wow. It's, it's a masterpiece. I love it. Wow. Great answers. Oh no, I still haven't thought. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you, Jade? <laughs> what game? Um, well, I always, I'm a bit of a Legend of Zelda fan and I'm gutted because I don't have a right sweet so um but I'm an old school like old old school Legend of Zelda like is it 8-bit <laughs> um, so if I had to say game I'd probably say Legend of Zelda because it's just so fantasy and magical and so cool and I was so in love with Link as a kid um <laughs> and then in terms of film that's really hard I guess from my childhood, I always loved like the big action fantasy kind of worlds that had like really good moral messages. And so I guess I really, really, really loved Tomb Raider. It's my guilty pleasure. I freaking love that film. I've watched it so many times. 
And I guess if I could have been involved in it or that or Star Wars, of course, but um, that would have been amazing. Um, but I was definitely too young. Uh, so, <laughs> and I wasn't living in the UK then. So, yeah, it would. Yeah, that was a really I just loved that film. It was so kick ass and fun. And Angelina Jolie was so much like just I mean, she was an archaeologist. This is another thing. <laughs> and so she was cool. hot. Yeah. She was so cool. <laughs> it was like awesome for me. So yeah, I love that film. Yeah. Now I want to go watch that. And I also want to watch the Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. Like, yeah. Thing, you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to take notes. Yeah. <laughs> you weekend for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're pretty much um, done, but there's two, well, one more question. There's a few more questions. I'll see if I can keep going for a little bit. Um, what is Rachie Monster says, what is the hardest part of making and filming an FMB game? And also what do you say the easiest part is? And I think we've kind of mentioned hardest parts, but we can sort of quickly go over those and then ask about easiest parts. Yeah. Well, I've all, I'm, Jay, do you want to go first? Oh God, I've got to go first. Um, okay. What's the hardest part? Oh, well, the hardest part of the complex for me as a producer was actually trying to explain to people what it was. That was, was actually the hardest, trying to get cast and, and, and finances and, and tell them what this thing is. Cause none of them played games and they don't understand what it is. And they don't really quite, they couldn't quite get their heads around it. So just that initial, like trying to buy in, get buy in for it was really hard. Um, so that was the hardest bit in terms of just, from a producing perspective from the easiest part the easiest part was releasing it <laughs> it's much easier than in film um because we had a wonderful publisher wales interactive who i will never never not say good things about because they're just so wonderful and i delivered everything that i would normally deliver for a film i delivered it to them and they i kept using this term gamify <laughs> <laughs> I have since learned that there's a lot more to, I know there's a lot more than them just pressing a button going gamify, but that's, you know, in my head, I was like, just gamify it. Um, yeah. And they did, and they did a wonderful job and they took care of so much stuff. And I just think that they were amazing to work with. So yeah. And I Fantastic. will hopefully be working with them again. Um, so yeah. What about you guys? Mm, I would say the hardest part again is just trying to figure out how to do something like this when there wasn't a lot of previous examples and there, you know, there's not a interactive game final draft version that you yeah. can just click over to that template and off you go. Um, final draft, please do that. That would be very helpful for all of us. Yeah. Uh, but I also think, uh, you know, it was just, it was complicated. I was very happy when Bandersnatch came out and I suddenly had something that was widely known mm -hmm. um, where people were like, oh, is that what you've been doing this whole time? I'm like, mm -hmm. there we go. Thank you. Uh, yes. Bandersnatch, the existence of Bandersnatch for that reason alone, I just, yeah. one of the most important films. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the last, yeah. Of the last I, decade. I You're think I need to hold great. my hand up and say, I, it wasn't my favorite, like out of FMBs, that is definitely not. You know, I, I didn't love it. I think we, I think we did a much better job. <laughs> that out there. Um, but it, as an example to the wider audience, it was very, very important. Mm. That's great. And uh, it helps in conversations. Like I'm sure with you guys, uh, they're probably in the hundreds of conversations now. Just that, oh, it's like Bandersnatch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Good work. It saved me like three, a three minute spiel about what I did, what 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 the kinds of films I make. So yeah, that's, mm. that's I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then probably the easiest. I mean, at the risk of sounding incredibly sentimental, the easiest part for me was working with all of you because mm. we worked really well together. Mm. Uh, this was an incredibly complicated. Uh, crazy thing that we were trying to pull off and it just it's always so incredibly wonderful and uh helpful and it makes it possible when you have people who jump on board with you and you are just in the trenches together um so yeah that was for me yeah. no that's you're both wonderful I, I you're all wonderful <laughs> 
I'd echo that, but I, I, I'd, yeah, I, to the interests of being, uh, having a different answer, I would say hardest part is actually something, I don't know if we've touched upon it, but the quantity of what we have to film, I don't know if we've actually touched on that because it's like, yeah, you, you know, it's like Jade said, it was the 187 pages. So at the end of the day, you have to shoot 187 pages. And obviously we, you know, I know Scorsese films are now three and a half hours long. So, you know, they're, they're shooting, maybe the scripts look like, like are, are a similar length, but it's still- His budget uh, is a little more than ours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he, and he he is, yeah, and he has a- hours. Like we, we shot that in 25 days, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I just need to let everyone know that yeah, is a so normal film shoot. Yeah, so that's the thing. <laughs> it's the quantity of, you know, if you, even at the, you know, our indie level, you know, mm -hmm. you still, you know, you'd have an 80 page script that you ha would have, you know, three, four, five weeks to shoot. Um, it's a bit different. It's 187 pages to versus eight. So it's like, it's a whole different, and that, that takes some getting used to. And, you know, obviously there are tricks of doing it and, it, but ultimately it still just means you're shooting, you're shooting a lot more in a day than you would be on a traditional linear film. So I would say that for me is still, even though I'm, you know, however many interactive FMV games deep it's still something that always is a challenge and you know something that you have to make compromises and, and employ all the tricks of the trade to, to to execute all the time um but then i would say again i've touched as i've touched on the easiest part is the fact that you know you can you can stick rigidly to your structure you know once you know it, it makes your your targets and your objectives every single day shooting and making in post in prep in thing it makes them so concrete that you're like nope that's the thing we have to shoot it this is how we have to shoot it and we can't deviate from this plan um yeah. so i would you say so good sorry yeah. i just had to make it. you were amazing with that like paul had the whole thing in his head and he just knew and if anyone was confused like which scene is this what are we doing paul was like boom this is what it is this well, i guess that's the thing with directors you can on a linear film you can get there on something and be like oh actually let's i, I want to try this and it's just like nope no can do, can't do that. <laughs> there's there's yeah. too much to do and it could mess up the whole matrix. So like you, it's it's uh it's quite liberating in that sense that and I, yeah, so maybe easy is not the word, but it just makes things a lot more a lot smoother. Um and you know, and I think that yeah, I would say that that's the structure. But thank thank you, Jade. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. <laughs> and and actually I have a note from Muse who didn't ask a question, but just wanted to say I want to commend Paul Rashid on how prolific he is for just 31. I played the gallery not too long ago and had a really good time with it. If you wouldn't mind passing along my adulation. Oh, thank you so much, Muse. <laughs> that, that actually that has like made my day. That's such a such a lovely message. And no, like I said, I would not be here if it were not for the the John's now gone, but the other people on this call, because you were the guys who, you know, gave me the who've had faith in me and believed in me and, you know, gave me the opportunity to start making interactive films. And, you know, luckily it I've just been able to keep making them since since then. But, you know, this was this was what started it all. So eternally grateful to you guys for allowing that to happen. And I'm um, just glad that, you know, people like them. So that's that's what Yay. we do. And, and then yes. we have one final thing, one final thing, um, which is what are we all working on next? So um, obviously John was working on something with Willem Dafoe, which I believe is a film film and not an interactive film. Um, I'm working on, well, I, to announce, I, I have a games arm of my company. And so we're now breaking out and I'm working with Paul on a film noir project. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got a couple of other interactive movies in the works. And then we've also got a, a sci-fi feature film that hopefully we'll be shooting um, either later this year or early next year. And that will be um, a nice normal linear feature film set on a distant planet which we're very excited about because I get to shoot somewhere warm <laughs> <Not in Yeah>. <laughs> 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 so so that's what I'm working on and um yeah on to you guys Amazing. um my next couple of things that I'm up to are a couple different features um some of which haven't been announced yet so I actually can't say too much about them um uh, but I'm up to my eyeballs writing tons of scripts right now and loving it they're all very much in the uh, sci-fi my sci-fi happy place um and yeah I think we're gonna be shooting one if not two of them uh later this year so oh fantastic very excited very ready to be back on set and uh just 
with everybody again. It's going to be great. Yeah. No, it's amazing. And, and yeah, so I've got, I've got, I'm, I'm in post-production, uh, very, you know, the advanced stage of post-production on an interactive project that I shot last year, which has not been announced yet, but uh, it should be announced uh, shortly, uh, which I'm very excited about. And then I'm going straight into prep for another interactive, uh, which again hasn't been announced, so I can't say much, but I can say it's shooting somewhere warm, <laughs> like a project, which is which will be fun. Uh, so that's going to shoot um, uh, middle of this year. Um, and then obviously I've got the project with Jade that we're we're developing um, as well. So yeah, hopefully you know there are about there are at least three interactive films, FMV games in the works, which will be coming coming very soon uh from from myself so yeah that's what i'm yeah. working at the moment and um and of course the complex too exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. which happened on this very call you yeah. all saw it take yeah. place in real time yeah. <laughs> this is the big press release yeah. Yeah. hi everyone yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing well thank you guys so much for listening and for being on the call and um yeah this this is us saying good night, goodbye, and um, we'll see you soon. Cheers, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you.